giving all praises to the most high and his son, thanking him for another opportunity to get it right, thanking him for another opportunity to learn uh, about the Bible. Today's class, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the straight way. This is a, this is a concept in the scriptures that a lot of us, we are missing about an evolution that a man or a woman must go through in order to get to the door of Christ so they can serve the Father how they're supposed to serve, right? Yeah. And this is a process that is illustrated through us through symbolism and through parables and through dark sayings that we are taking and we are attempting to recreate these things physically when the truth of the matter is these are all things that goes on inside or inside of every single one of us. And this is the process that you have to go through to meet Christ. First, you read about Adam, and Adam talks about how the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground, that dust, that earth. The earth was void and low and without form. That dust, my people are in captivity because of a lack of knowledge. That dust, that earth. You read about the resurrection of the dead. The dead must come out of the earth. That earth is just that lower estate, that first, that, that first stage that a man must go through in order to see Christ. Then he got to meet the water man. Bring it out. Because when you come out of that dirt, when you come out of that earth, you dirty is you dirty. Right. Dust all on you. So you got to get cleansed. That's right. right. Moses, wash your clothes on the third day. John the Baptist is baptizing with that water. Bring it out. Because the water represents a pure slate. Bring it out. Bring it out. That's right. A pure slate. White clean. After you come out of your lower estate. And that's a part to where a lot of us we struggle at. It's to wipe ourselves clean. That's right. You know, half washing. Half cycle rinses from the washing machine. After you get purified with that water, which is the word, then you go to the book of Thessalonians and you go to the book of Exodus on how the Lord is coming with chariots. You read about his horsemen and his riders coming out of descending out of the sky with a pale horse, a red horse. You read about being called up in the clouds and meeting God in the air. These concepts are very familiar with us. That's just the next stage after you get baptized with the water. You got to meet God in the air. That's right. And after you meet God in the air, you read about what John the Baptist was talking about, how the shoes that he wasn't able to fill because John baptized with water and the ones that come in after him baptized with that fire. Right. Then you read about fire concepts in the, in the, in the, in the Bible, about how a man must be uh, uh, the Lord is going to try a man like as a gold, like, you know, through the fire. Your your, your faith is going to be tried as fire. The Lord going to come with fire in his chariots like a whirlwind with that fire. And, and, the, and the elements shall, shall, shall melt with fervent heat. These are all concepts of purging sin. And after you get baptized with the fire, and after you get baptized with fire, then you're able to sit on the right hand side with Christ, and you'd be able to dwell in the kingdom of heaven. That's the concepts of the scriptures that we must get familiar with, and all of these things happens inside of every single man and every single woman, because these are evolutions. There's nothing new under the sun, and we must be purged with that water. Give me John one and nineteen. Hopefully we caught that and we can stay in tune with that because that's what the scriptures is all about. We're given the scriptures and allegories and parables and we are busy trying to validate the realness of these events actually happening instead of understanding that whatsoever things was written a fourth time, it was just simply written for our learning. Read this right. out. John. 1 and 19. Read. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? You gotta understand that John, these are this is a this is something that 
should be happening to every single one of us. You know, when, when, once we are awakened out of that dust, then it's time for us to be cleansed. But before we get cleansed and before we wipe our minds clean, leave all doctrines and leave traditions of men and leaving religion and fully purging ourselves clean with the washing of water by the word, there's always going to be something inside of us that's always going to want to hold us back. Bring it out. Family, friends, emotions, feelings, situations. There's always going to be something in our life that's always trying to keep us in that wilderness and won't let us break three, break forth into the promised land. So understand and be in that type of mindset when you read this. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? This is, this is, you want to take it like that. This is just one man doing God work, stirring up a lot of trouble with his doctrines. Bring it out. Teaching the word how it's supposed to be taught. Read. And he confessed. And he did what? And he confessed. See, he confessed Christ. He confessed the Lord. Bring it out. Read. And denied not. Did not deny him. Keep reading. But confessed. But confessed also. Read. I am not the Christ. Give me Acts 13 and 14. Again, start to understand the scriptures as these things are going on every day, every single moment throughout our lives. And we must start to take it and use it as these things were written for our learning and for our wisdom and for our growth. Take the parables, take the dark sayings, let's decode them and let's start applying them to our lives as the scriptures is given to us to help to apply in our life. Read this. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 14. And this is the reason why John the Baptist, the scripture says that John confessed when the Levites and, and, and the chief priest is asking John, who are you? Keep reading. But when they departed from Persia, they came to Antioch and Poseidon and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. He read it. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. Read verse 22. Verse 22. Read. And when he had removed him. And then when, when John confessed, this is what he's confessing. When the scripture says John confessed to the Levites and to the chief priests. Read. He raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, and a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. He read him. Of this man's seed had God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai. He read him. When John had first preached, before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Let's go back to John 1 and 20. Just setting the scene. Just setting the mood for you. Because a lot of the times, man, we'll read this. And then in our head, we'll imagine a man named John. We'll put on him a robe. And, and, and like we'll like, Bring it and then like we'll like create this image of what Jerusalem used to look like 2,000 years ago. And then we'll try to like put this image together in our head and we're never able to do it That's right. because it's not meant for that. That's right. Not at all. Bring it out. Right. It's meant for your learning. Understand that. Bring and if you try to, you know, you, we, we try to put images together from 2000 years ago and we can't even put images together from three years ago. Bring it out. Right. We got to get out of that type of a religion-based 
mindset and start getting more spiritual to be carnal minded as enmity against God. Read this, uh, John 1 and 20. Read. And he confessed. So he confessed about Christ. Read. And denied not. Did not deny Christ. Read. But confessed. But understood. Keep reading. I am not the Christ. Understood his place. Understood what time of the age that is actually in. And us, we must understand the time of the period of the life that we are living in. Some of us are trying to escape the wilderness. Some of us are ready for our breakthrough. Some of us are ready to do things different. Some of us are ready to raise up from the dead, but we're not understanding what Christ is and we're not understanding. We're not knowing which way to go. Let's get more tuned in with this movement and with this walk and with the scriptures and what they're trying to tell us. Keep reading. And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias? And then you think about it, man, about us. Think about some of the doctrines that we've been learned and we try to find out who is who. I mean, it doesn't even work like that. Read. And he said, I am not. See, Elijah said, I am not. But a lot of us, we've been taught that Elijah didn't know who he was. I mean, that <clears throat> Shalaki, that John the Baptist did not know who he was. And that's not true. When you're chosen, you know you're chosen. That's right. When you're the son of man, you know exactly you're the son of man. That's right. There's no confusion. But in the sense of this aspect, remember to be carnally minded is death. Read. Art thou that prophet? He answered, no. Give me 1 Corinthians 2 and 11. This is going into what I'm saying. Trying to set the mood to get the people to understand this voice that's crying in the wilderness is telling us to make that straight highway for God. It's a process that we have to go through. And some of us, we want to skip the process. Some of us, we don't know the process. And everybody has to go through that process. This is a spiritual enlightenment that we must all go through in order to walk with the Father. Keep reading this. Read this out. First Corinthians 2 and 11. Read. For what man knoweth the things of a man? What man knoweth the things of a man? Read. Save the spirit of man which is in him. Only the spirit of Christ that is inside the man which is in him. Read. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. Man doesn't know the will of God, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your thoughts are not my thoughts, neither your ways are my ways. Read. But the Spirit of God. If you want to know the things of God, you must have the Spirit of God within you. Keep reading. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. And these things are right in front of our faces right now. To receive the spirit of God, but with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life, Israelites have a trouble with receiving the spirit of the world. Read. That we might know the things that are freely given to us. And you got to understand, your sins have already been forgiven as of to this day. This knowledge is freely given unto us, but we letting Pharaoh hold us back in Egypt. Right. Read, read it. Bring it out. Freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. And this is the teachings that we start. We must start to get and start to understand and start to apply in our life. Verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teach, not that man wisdom, but which the wisdom that the Holy Spirit teaches, that fire. Read. Com comparing spiritual things. With spirit. And you have to compare the spiritual things with the spiritual aspect of things. Keep reading. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. And that's why sometimes it gets very carnal. It gets very hard for us when you're in that carnal state of mind. That's right. The natural man, it's hard for that natural man to understand the spiritual greatness of God. Read. Wow. For they are foolishness unto him. Read again. For they are foolishness unto him. Keep reading. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. These things are spiritually discerned. The whole scriptures are spiritually discerned. Christ, that carnal man, I mean, Adam, that carnal man, had to be put to death in order for Christ to arise in him. So that first man got to be able to put it to death. But when that second man is raised up, he's coming out of the earth and he needs a bath. That's right. He needs a bath. That's right. Right? Needs to be washed. And that's what John the Baptist represents. It represents a 
remissions of sins. It represents a baptism, a complete renewal of the mind, right? Yeah. And after your mind gets renewed, your mind got to get trained up. Got to meet God in the air. It's like Moses meeting the burning bush, yeah. right? Yeah. It's that fire, that baptism of fire. We're going to keep going with that. Give me Romans 8 and 5. Again, to expound on that, about us really trying to physically manifest this as if that this is not talking to your heart. Go to uh, Romans 8 and 5. Read that. Romans 8 and 5. Read. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And this is just talking about a lower a state of a mind that you think the lust of the flesh is a lower estate. The lust of the eye is a lower estate. The pride of life is a lower estate of a way that a man or a woman thinks. Read. But they that are after the spirit. But they that are after Christ that have risen from the dead. Read. The things of the spirit. So when you're talking and when you're walking and when you're out on your everyday life, you are able to keep and be spiritually. Keep reading. Or to be carnally minded is dead. And that's why all that it means is that when you're walking around trusting on your own opinion, not diligently seeking for the wisdom that will allow you to change your life, I mean, it doesn't end well. Read. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And that's all it is. To be spiritually minded is that peace, is the lower rest that you read about. It's just to be spiritually minded. Keep reading. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. So you understand that? So when you read in the scriptures, man, with your carnal mind, you're going against the nature of the Father. That's right. That's right. Very simple and very, very straight to the point. This is in the Bible. Sometimes, as Israelites, we skip over a lot of things in the Bible, right? That's right. We down. must stop doing that. You Bring miss a lot down. of information. Read verse 7 again. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's very enmity against God. It, 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 it's against the nature of God to be in the flesh or to be Adam. Read. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can't ascend. You can't raise from the dead. Because Pharaoh going to hold you down. The plagues are going to hold you down. Nebuchadnezzar going to hold you down if you're in Babylon. Bring it out. Right? It's always going to be obstacles. That's going to be holding you down, being in the flesh. Read. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. We're in the spirit today, right now. We're in the spirit right now. Keep reading. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. The spirit of God dwells in each inside of each and every one of us. Read. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, Christ is inside of every one of us. And if Christ is actually in you, the temple is in you. Read. The body is dead. See, that sin is dead. Read. Because of sin. That's all it's saying is that if Christ is inside of you, man, you're not going to be a sinner. Lusting of the flesh. Lusting of the eye. The pride of life. Right? I can be being, being a knucklehead. Essentially. Right? Not treating others the way that you want to be treated, right? Yeah. Not loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. Those type of things, right? Those type of things. If Christ is in you, you know, you're not even under the law. Read. But the Spirit is life. But the what? But the Spirit is life. See, the Spirit of Christ actually brings forth that fruit. When the, when the, when the, when a plant has life, it bears fruit. Read. Because of righteousness. Give me John 1 and 21 again. Let's go back. Understand that if you want to meet Christ, you got to be submerged in water. That's right. You want to meet the Lord, you want to meet Christ, you have to be submerged in water, right? right. Submerged in that water because as a man, as, as, as a man accept Christ, he must have to, he must have to, to, that is the first, that is the first sign of him submitting to crucifying his flesh. That's right. Right? After he crucifies his flesh, he has to be raised from the dead. He's dirty. Now it's time for him to wipe his mind clean. After he wipes his mind clean, after he meets John the Baptist in his own life, in her own life, she must meet John the Baptist in her life. That's right. He must come across 
John the Baptist in his life or Elijah in his life, his own personal life in order to meet Christ. Read that up. John 1 and 21. Read. And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elijah? Art thou Elijah? Read. And he said, I am not. He said, no. Keep reading. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. Give me Luke 10 and 17. Because if you're chosen, you know that you're chosen, man. That's not being puffed up. That's not being arrogant. That's right. But if you if you're a man of God and you're sent to do God work, you know you're a man of God. There's no confusion about that. Right. Right. right? And you know what type of spirit you have on you too. Give me give me Luke 17 and 7. Give me Luke 10 and 17. I just want to prove my point with that. Read this. Luke 10 and 17. Read. And the 70 returned again. These are the 70 elders. This is the same contrast as you read in the book of Exodus. It's the same story. Remember, you read the same thing, the same stories, the same allegories, the same parables over and over again in the scriptures. Read. And the 70 returned again with Job, saying, Lo, even the devils are subject unto us. Thy name. Even all unclean spirits are subject unto us through this doctrine. Read. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling fall from heaven. See, because this age, in this age that we are coming in right now, lies are falling to the earth. Read. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not. Not in standing in this power or this understanding. Don't rejoice. Rejoice not. Read. That the spirits are subject unto you. Don't be in the carnal aspect of understanding that the spirits are subject unto you. Into this spirit. Read. But rather rejoice. But rather do what? But rather rejoice. But rather rejoice when the spirit of Christ comes unto you. Why? Read. Because your names are written in heaven. It's already written. It's already yeah. set, sealed, and done. Right? right? So, yeah, you do know, bro. Yeah, you do. You do. You have a good clue. You might be blind if you don't know. Give me John 1 and 22. Let's go back. And this is talking about what must happen between a man or a woman in their own personal life once they are reborn again. Once they come up out of the dead, come up out of that dirt formed from the dust of the ground, full of dirt, full of mud, you must be submerged in water you must be cleansed your mind must be cleansed in order for you to learn new old things new you must put off the old man and put on the new man you must take that old bottle you must take the new bottle put new wine in it it's the same concepts and these things must happen to each and every one of us in each and every one of our lives everybody you want to see christ you must meet john the baptist you got to meet john bring it out you have to because he's the man with the water. Give me John 1 and 22. Read that. John 1 and 22. Read. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? Who art thou? See, when the, you see when 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 change is trying to come in your life, and a renewance and a fresh and the cleansing is trying to come in your life. Something inside of us always trying to hold us down. Something questioning. Something keeping us in bondage. Keeping us with Pharaoh in that wilderness. Refusing to allow us to cross that red sea. You got to be strong in the Lord, man. You want to break through. That's right. That's right. Bring it up. Because every day you got to battle with yourself. Read verse 22 again from the top. Then said they. Then said they. You got to understand they. Then said they. Right? Read. Then, that, then said they unto him, Who art thou? Who are you? Who are you with this 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 new way? This new doctrine? Baptizing the people, teaching the people. Who art thou? Read. That we may give an answer to them that sent us. That we may give an answer, that we may give an account to bring back the word. Read. What sayest thou of thyself? Who are you? Understand John came preaching the baptism of repentance. Understand that. Give me Mark 1 and 1. Because who art thou? Remember what John is. 
John, you got to see that, man. You must see John. Because John is going to wipe you clean. And John is what's going to prepare the way in preaching the baptism of repentance. Give me Mark 1 and 4. Read that. Mark 1 and 4. Read. John did baptize in the wilderness. John baptized in a dry place that every one of us is at coming up out of that dust of the ground. Read. And preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. That's what the water represents, the remissions of sins. The baptism of repentance. A new start. Repent. A new life. Repent. A fresh start. It's the baptism of that. Sometimes you're going to have to move to the left. You might have to move to the right to meet John. Give me Isaiah. Give me John 1 and 22 again. Go back. And remember, you know, these are things that we all have to go through in our lives. This is when you meet John. This is right after you've been raised from the dead. That's right. Bring it out. Right after. Bring it out. Soon as you come out that womb, soon as you come out that earth, soon as the baby born, what you got to do? Wash the baby. That's right. Soon as it's born. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a metaphorical concept of a man cleansing his life or a woman cleansing her life in order to meet Christ. Read verse 22 again. John 1 and 22. Read. Then they said unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? Read. He said. This is what the answer that he gave. He said, he said, read. I am the voice. Hold up. I am the what? I am the voice. Hold up. I am the what? I, I am, am the, the voice. voice. So what is John? John is the what? He's the what? I am the voice. You ever heard that voice be talking to you? Bring it out. That voice? You ain't never heard that voice. You know what I'm talking about when you in that wilderness, when you in that dark place, telling your ass to get up. Telling you it's time. Telling you it's time to wash your clothes. Telling you it's time to repent. It's that voice. That's what John is. Sister got it. Brother got it. We all got it. He said, I am that voice. I'm that voice in your head. I'm that voice. Read verse 23 again. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. See, that voice, when you're in that wilderness, it's always going to be that voice that's going to be crying to you. That voice that's going to be telling you. That voice that's going to give you a sign. The voice that's going to prepare that way. The voice that's going to tell you exactly where you're supposed to go. Break it's always going to be that voice. Break it out. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Read. Make straight the way of the Lord. What the voice say? Make straight the way of the Lord. What the voice say? Make, Make straight, straight the way of the Lord. Lord. Read. As said the prophet, Esai. You ever heard that voice, man, telling you to get your stuff right, man? Get right. Make that way straight. Get it straight. Get your stuff straight. Make your way straight so you can repent. Make your way straight so you can see the Lord. Make your way straight so you can raise up out your sins. Make that up. way straight. Bring it Stop out. playing with yourself. Y'all ever heard that voice? Bring it Bring it it's John talking to you. Spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Give me Isaiah 40 and 1. Beautiful. And a lot of the times, man, we take the prophets and we misuse the prophets, man. We misuse the, 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 the elegancies, man, when they always telling us about Christ. Every story in the Bible, every metaphor, every allegory always is a story about a man leading to Christ. Every, every single one. You got to lead to Christ because... Christ is the way, the door, the light, the truth, all that. Once you get to that barrier, once that veil is split, then you're able to meet God. Read this up. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40 and 1. Read. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, said your God. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, said your God. Your God is telling us it's time for comfort. It's time for healing. It's time for reconciliation. Read. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Speak ye comfortably to the nation. Read. And cry unto her. And acknowledge this unto the nation. Read. That her warfare is a comfort. Read again. That her warfare is a comfort. Read again. That, that her warfare, warfare is a comfort. Why are these blood? Why, why are these brothers in Israel so filled with blood? Bring it out. Bring it out. That's all they want. That's right. It's blood. Bring it out. They want to kill somebody. Bring it out. Bring it out. Blood. 
There is no war in the time of Christ. There is no war with, with, when, you, when you're dealing with Christ. That's right. Bring it up. The warfare is done when? Bring it out. It's spiritually. But some of these brothers, man, get off with that warfare tip, man. Our warfare is already accomplished. Read. That her iniquity is pardoned. For she hold has... Hold up, hold up, hold up. That her warfare is accomplished. Keep reading. That her iniquity... Is part that her what? That her iniquity is part. Israel, your sins are already forgiven. Right Today, your sins are forgiven. You. Some of us live in our sins. We still have the guilt of sin riding over us today. Bring it out. Bring it out. That guilt, that guilt trip, that guilt factor. Only person that's making you feel guilty is you. Bring right. It out. Bring it out. Right. That guilt factor. Your sins are forgiven. Give me First John 1 and 19. To prove that, man. Your sins are already forgiven. Through the Lord. Now go and be yourself. Go ahead and serve the Lord, man. Go ahead and be the person that you're supposed to be, man. We, we need First John 1 and 9. So like you, First John 1 and 9. You know, go ahead and your sins are forgiven. Stop living in that guilt. We need doctors. Right. Lawyers, secretaries, out. engineers, builders. Right. We need brothers to be that, man. We need sisters to go ahead and be that. But a lot of us, we're still competing for God for to make it to the kingdom. We're still competing. Bring it out. We use God on a basis of a reward system. If That's I right. do good, God going to bless me. If I do bad, I'm going to ask for forgiveness. Bring it out. Still to this day, get out of that mindset. Your sins are already forgiven. Read this up. First John 1 and 9. Read. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. See, but you got to confess, though. And that's yeah. that guilt. That's that guilt, right? And that's that bondage that does not allow you. That does not, that does not give you the power to confess. But you cloak it, you cover it, and you hide it. To try to think that you have to keep all the commandments in order for your sins to be forgiven. All you got to do is confess. And they're forgiven. Right now, today, if you're serious about it. Read verse 9 again. Because Israel, we're still not understanding this. We're competing for God. Read verse 9 again. If we confess our sins. If we confess. That's all we have to do is confess and be real with ourselves. Read. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And then your sins will be forgiven. Keep reading. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Give me Acts 26 and 15. About that. For the forgiveness of sins. To walk away from darkness. If you confess. Saying the same thing over and over and over again. One thing you might see. To turn away from darkness. The one scripture you might read. To turn away from sin. The one scripture you might read. Um, confess. Another scripture you might read. Um, the devil. It's just different ways that. Same thing that you're going through in your life, brother, and the same thing that you're going through in your life, sister. You should be able to look at the scripture and say, damn, this is me. Right now. Should be able to do it. And if you can't do that, then you might have eyes and see not. Give me Acts 26. Start at verse 15. Acts 26 and 15. Read. And I say, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yahweh Shai. Whom thou persecute. A lot of us persecute Christ with our old doctrines. Read. Right. But rise and stand upon thy feet. And this is the same thing that Christ is telling Paul. It's the same thing as saying rise from the dead. It's the same thing as saying hey, wake out of sleep. All he is telling them is just rise out that dead and stand on your feet. Read. For I have appeared unto thee. I have made myself manifest unto you. Read. For this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness. Both of the th of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Keep reading. Delivering thee from the people. Delivering the people from the nation, read. And from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light. To open their eyes to where Israelites may be able to see and turn their sins into righteousness, turning they, confessing their sins, read. And from the power of Satan unto God. Changing from the power of Satan unto God. Read. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. It's just telling you to confess again. That's all it's saying. 
turn it from darkness to light, turn it from Satan to God, that you may receive the remissions of sins. It's just telling you to confess. That's right. That's right. it. Bring it out. Remember, this is written for our learning. That's this right. is written for our understanding. This is how you right. get built up. That's right. right. That's all it's telling. It's just to confess. And if you confess, your sins are already forgiven. That's but right. some of us, we love Pharaoh. Read. And inheritance among them. Which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Isaiah 40 and 2. Let's go back. Isaiah 40 and 2. Meaning, 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 hearing that voice that's crying in the wilderness. That voice. That voice that you hear. John the Baptist say, I am that voice. I am the voice that's crying in the wilderness. Sister, you hear that voice all the time and you ignore that mud. Bring it out. You hear it? That's right. You hear that brute? That's right. You hear that voice and you ignore it. The voice of one crying in the wilderness telling us to make do way straight. Isaiah 40 and 2. Read it again. Isaiah 40 and 2. Read. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. See, our warfare is accomplished. Read. That her iniquity is part that your sins are already forgiven. Read. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Read again. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness tell us to do what? Read. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Read again. Prepare, Prepare ye the, the way, way of, of the Lord. Lord. It's telling you to prep yourself. If you got when you when you when you get ready, like a lot of us, man, Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai and all this stuff, right? Yep. In order to really meet with Yahweh Shai, you want to be with Christ, you gotta prepare a way for him, right? It's like it's like that red carpet. You got to lay out that red carpet. Right. And remember, the most I don't deal in temples made with hands. You understand that? Right. Yeah. So you want to deal with that Lord, man. You got to you gotta make that way straight. Yeah. See what I'm saying? No right. crookeds. No turns. No lifts. No right. You got to be straight. So, symbolically, what do that mean that you got to be? You got to be straight. That's right. You got to be in your straight mind. That's right. You got to be in your right mind. That's right. In order for you to even get a chance to be able to meet the Lord. Read verse 3 again. Read it again. The voice of him that cries. It's that voice of him that cried up in the wilderness, man. All of us hear that voice. Some of us scared of that voice. Some of us don't want to deal with that voice. Yeah. But that voice, when all of us we in that wilderness, that voice that's crying under you, read. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the de desert. Hold up, make straight in the what? In the desert. So you got to understand where you at right now when you got to prepare that way for the Lord. You in the wilderness. Bring it out. Even in that wilderness, even in that dark place, even in that shadow place, you got to start preparing your mind for Christ. That's right. That's right. And that's just you just getting your mind right, getting your stuff together. Being able to be in love, being able to love your brother as you love yourself, you keep God's commandments. It's very simple. Right. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in a desert a highway for our God. Give me Luke 13 and 20. Let's expound on that. Luke 13 and 20. This is a process. That every one of us must go through in our lives. In Hebrew Israelites, we done fell asleep back into Christianity. That's right. And we just come in the Sabbath class. And hallelujah. And we don't, we haven't seen anything. We're still walking in darkness. That's right. We got to turn this notch up a little bit. If you want to see Christ, you got to fight for it. Read this up. Bring it out. Luke 13 and 20. And this is talking about making the, 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 the way straight. Going into actually what they mean. Read. And said, and again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom? Read. It is like leaven. It is like what? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leaven. Read verse 23. Verse 23. No, read 22. Keep reading. Verse 22. And he went through these cities and villages, teaching 
and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive, strive to enter in at the straight gate. You see how the, see how Christ is telling us to strive in the straight gate. The voice in the wilderness in your head told you to prepare that gate. Prepare that way. Enter in at that straight gate. That straight gate. That, that true way. Read. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in. Many going to enter in. Many going to seek to enter in. Many. Read. And shall not be able. Why not? See, that's the thing. You know, many, many, many are called few and chosen for what? Why? Right Many gonna be able to, many shall knock at that door and not get in. Why? Read. When once the master of the house is risen up. Once the master is risen up, read. And has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not, which ye are. Who you think this is talking about? When you're reading this, who do you think this is dealing with? This is dealing with Israelites who don't want to leave Pharaoh. Right right who don't want to leave. But I want you to listen to the context and to prove that this is talking directly to us. Read. Then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence. And thou hast taught in our streets. Ain't we taught in the streets? Bring it out. Huh? Bring it out. Ain't we doing the work, doing the work, doing the work? Huh? Read. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not which ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. And this is Israelites, man, you know, secretly, man, secretly still in sin. And that's what I mean by secretly still being in sin. You know, man. Again, the hatred. The hatred. Bring it out. That's right. The, Bring it out. the, the envious spirits. That's right. These emotional spirits. Bring it out. out. You can do God work all day long. You can go to the street corners and teach. You can tell your mama and your daddy all day long. But until you Negroes lose that hate. Lose that envy. Bring it out. Lose that confrontational malice ass spirit. That's right. You'll never enter the kingdom of God, man. That's right. Never. That's right. Never. Never. That's right. And some of these brothers in these camps envious of their own brother. Bring jealous of their own brother. That's right. That's right out. And the ones that walk in with Christ can see it, man. That's right. They can see it. See, that's how you know you're chosen. Let's go back. Proverbs 3 and 1. Proverbs 3 and 1. Make, 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 make the way path. Make, make, make the way straight. Trying to get yourself cleansed. Make the way straight, brothers and sisters. Make it straight. You want to make it straight? This is all you got to do. Give me Proverbs 3 and 4. Read this. Proverbs 3 and 4. Read. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That's how you got to do it, man. When you wash with that water, you got to start trusting in the power. You know, sometimes you just got to take a deep breath. That's right. right. Everything going to be fine. You take that deep right. breath three minutes later, everything change. You see what I'm saying? Trust in the Lord sometimes, man. Don't 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 get bottled up in your head to make you panic and stuff. Read. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Keep reading. In all thy ways. Some of your ways. In all thy ways. A few of your ways. In all thy ways. The Lord said, in all your ways, read. Acknowledge, him. Acknowledge the power, read. And he shall direct thy path. Give me Psalms 37 and 23. You know, this is a this is a famous scripture, man, about if you want to make that way straight. You got to understand your sins are already forgiven. Make the way straight for the most high and the son to come in your life, man, and show you what the light is about. But the steps of a good man are already ordered. Right. They're already ordered. But, 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 but you messing up your own steps because you don't want to let go. Bring it out. It's that voice. That voice crying in that wilderness. It's that voice. Telling you to make the way straight for God. Read this. 
Psalm 37, 23. Read out. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholding him with his hand. Give me Isaiah 43 again. Let's go back. Understand, brothers and sisters, that voice is calling you right now. Bring it out. Bring it out. Today. That's right. right. You see it on a lot of your faces. That's right. You know, ever see, you know, you know, when that when that spirit is getting vexed, when that spirit is ready for a breakthrough. Right? It's that voice crying in that wilderness telling you, just like that child is being ready to be born. Give me Isaiah 40 and 3. Read again. Isaiah 40 and 3. Read. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. It's that voice of us that's crying in that wilderness. Read. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of God. Read. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Keep reading. Every valley shall be exalted. Read again. Every valley shall be exalted. See that valley represent that dust. The valley. Bring it out. It's the lower estate. Bring it out. When you prepare that highway, that valley is going to be exalted. You'll climb in the spirit. That's right. Read. And every mountain and hill. See, when you in that mountain estate, though, you puffed up. When Christ come, when Christ is around, when that spirit is around, you get brought low. Read. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. Give me John 1 and 23. Let's go back. You're coming out of that grave, right? You got to wash. Once you come out the grave, you have to wash. That's all this represents. That's all it represents. Look it out. When you come out of that grave, you have to wash. Give me John 1 and 23 again. Read again. John 1 and 23. Read. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. See, that's that voice. Who, who, who are you? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Read. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Keep reading. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. You got to understand this. It said, they which were sent of uh, the Pharisees. You read verse 19. It says, This is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem. You got priests and Levites, Pharisees. Bring it out. I understand that, brothers. That's right. I understand that. Bring it out. Please understand that. Get that through your head. Levites. Bring it out. Mighty, mighty Levites. Bring it out. Priest, priest, priest. Bring it out. Pharisees. That's right, that's right. You know what I mean? Pharisees. Understand that, brothers. Don't, don't, please don't lose that aspect. Verse 25, read that. Verse 25. Read. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not the Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. Read again. I baptize with water. See, when you meet John, when John come into your life, John baptized you with that water. Read. But there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. And that's that fire. Give me Acts 1 and 1. See, John come with that water that cleanses you, just like how you put the water on them dishes. To cleanse them dishes, you put that water on your car. To clean your car, you put the water on your body. To clean your body. That's what it represents. A new slate. That's right. A clean slate. Bring it out. A new start. A new way. Bring it out. A new life. Starting clean in order to follow Christ. Acts 1 and 1. Read that. Acts 1 and 1. Read. Start at verse 2. Verse 2. Read. Until the day in which he was taken up. After that he through the Holy Ghost. Hold up. You see what the Bible says? It says... Unto that day in which he was taken up in the cloud. And after that, read. After that, he 
through the Holy Ghost, through the baptism of fire, read, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Can you read him? And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which say, He, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water. And that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. You want to meet Christ, you must be with the water. You must meet the water man. For John truly baptized with water, read. But ye shall baptize with the Holy Ghost. With that fire, read. Not many days hence. Give me Acts 19 and 1. That's that voice that's crying to you in the wilderness. It's telling you, sister. It's telling you all to be baptized with water. That's right out. That's what it's telling you. Sister got to get dunked. Brother got to get dunked. Baby got to get dunked. Old man got to get dunked. Old woman got to get dunked. Bring it out. Have to. Bring it out. Because if you don't, man, you will be in that wilderness. That's right. Dry. No water. No food. Dry. Dying in that wilderness. Read that up. Acts 19 and 1. Read. And it came to pass that why, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost? Have you received a fire, read? Since ye believed. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And this is the next level above the water, read. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. They was baptized with water. After you baptized with water, you cleaned yourself and you wash yourself up with the water of the word, then you meet Christ. Then you follow the Lord. You can't follow the Lord with a messed up mind. Bring that out. Impossible. Bring that out. But it's, it, you can't do it. Mind bottled up. Trying to follow the right spirit. It does not happen. Give me Ephesians 5 and 25. Bring it out. Bring it out. Understanding what John represents in your life. Understanding what the water man represents in your life. Disciples asked Christ, when is the coming of the second kingdom? He said, when you see the man carrying a pitcher of water, knowing that the time is not. When you yeah. see him carrying the pitcher of water, know that the time is not. First, you got to be cleansed in order to walk with Christ. Read this. Ephesians 5 and 25. Read. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he may sanctify and cleanse it. That he may sanctify and cleanse it, her, the nation, read. With the washing of water. With the washing, cleansify him, read. By the word. By the what? By the word. By the what? By, By the, the word. word. It's that word of God. That's what cleans you first. Right, that's right. Clean your mind up first. That's why John on the scene. John at your front door. Bring it out. Got a portable swimming pool for you. Ready Bring to get dunked. Open Bring the front door. Go ahead and dive in it. Bring it out. Clean Bring it up your mind with all these old, with these old doctrines you got, man. Right. Clean it up. Leave it alone. The old ways. Your old ways. Your old life. Your old lifestyle. Clean it up. Dive in this pool, fam. Read verse 26 again. Verse 26. Read. That he might sanctify That he may sanctify it, purge it, set it apart, cleanse it, read. And cleanse it. And cleanse it, read. With the washing of water by the word. By John, by that, by that water baptism. Keep reading. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. You see what the washing does? It presents you clean. The water. The one in the voice crying in the wilderness telling you to make that straight way. That water, it presents you clean. Just like when you're coming out of the dust of the ground. Think about it spiritually. This is what it's talking about. Sister and brother been in the grave for the past seven years. Bring it out. Finally coming out that grave. 
finally getting the spirit, finally waking up, finally coming out the dead, dunk him in the water. Bring it out. Need to be made. That's right. That he may present it to himself a glorious church. Read. Not having spot. Not having what? Not having spot. Being pure and being clean and being white clean of pure mind, not having spot. Read. Or wrinkle. Or that wrinkle having any sin. Read. Or any such thing. But that it should be holy. That it should be sanctified. Read. And without blame. Give me John 3 and 5. That voice crying out in that wilderness. It's telling you that you must be cleansed with that water. It's telling you to just repent. What are you holding on to? What are you holding on for? Yeah. You scared of what somebody else gonna say? Bring it out. Are you Bring scared? Right You're out. really scared? Bring it, Bring it out. You're scared? Bring it out. Pharaoh still got control of you. That's right. That's right. Refuse to let you go. Understand the concepts of these things, what it means. Read John 3 and 5. Read again. John 3 and 5. Read. Yahweh shall answer. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. Hold up, hold up. Read again. Except a man be born of water. So when you're born, man, you got to be cleansed. Born of that water. Wipe your clean. Read. And of the Spirit. Which is the Holy Ghost. Read. He cannot. Enter into the kingdom of God. So you got to get that water. You must meet the water, man, in order to enter in the kingdom of God. You got to get cleansed first. That's right. You must get cleansed first. And that voice that's in your head is telling you to make the way straight path for the Lord. That's what it's telling you to do. To go ahead and let go. Let it go. Christ made you free. Let it go. Bring it out. Yeah. Let it go. Bring it out. Let it go. John 1 and 27. Hopefully we can see what that bondage is now. Hopefully we can see with the fetters and the yokes of iron. We can understand what that means now. Every one of us is dealing with that in our own lives. That's right. right? And we waiting on Jesus to come and fix it. Bring it, out. Bring it out. Waiting on Jesus to come and handle it. When the Lord told you that you got to be baptized with water, then the spirit, in order to even enter into the kingdom. Read this. John 1 and 27. Read. He it is whom coming after me. Is preferred before me. See that baptism, see that fire baptism is come after the water, but it's preferred before the water. Read. Whose shoes latching I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth or, or Barbara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. Keep reading. The next day. Hold up. The what? The next day. Hold up. See, one thing that I want y'all to realize is. Listen to me closely. Whenever that you are reading the Bible, in the Bible, it goes directly against your natural common sense. Bring it out. Bring it out. Like somebody is there writing this down, you must stop and you must say, God trying to tell me something. Bring it out. You must do that. That's right. As soon as you be like, hold up, what? Wait, what? You must say that God is trying to tell me something. If you don't, you'll never see it. Read verse 28 again. Verse 28. Read. These things were done in Beth Abara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. Where John is baptized and cleansing. Read. The next day, John said, Yahweh Shai coming unto him. And say, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I say, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me, and I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest to Israel. See, before the Lord should be made manifest to Israel, read. Therefore am I come. Baptizing with water. You got to be baptized with water first. That's right. Bring it out. Before the Lord can be manifest unto you. Because a lot of us, we have no inclination of Christ. Bring it out. Man. Bring that out. Right. Especially the brothers that teach on the street corners. Bring it 
Yeah. Hey, bro, bro, they can't they can't go precept for precept about Christ. Yeah. It, it's difficult to them. It's hard. Because we're not understanding what Christ is. But in order for Christ to be manifested unto us, we have to meet John. Right. We got to deal with John in our life. In our real life. What you think you're going to meet a man that, that that's, that's, that's dunking people underwater? Out. You think you're going to meet a man that got real water? Bring it out. Bring it out. Huh? This is within you. This is within you. You want to meet Christ in order for Christ to be manifest unto your life? You got to deal with John. Read verse 31 again. Read again. Verse 31. This is that voice that's crying in the wilderness telling you to make that straight way. Read. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest in Israel. I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Read. Therefore am I come. Baptizing with water. Because I'm here to do a mission. I got to cleanse their mind first and be ordered to be able to deal with their fire. Keep reading. And John bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Verse 32, it says, And John bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And it abode on him. This is one of those things I keep telling you, man. When you when you read things like that, you have to stop. That's right. You have Bring to. That's right. You have to, bro. That's right. Because I'm gonna ask anybody. Explain this. Bring it out. You saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it rested on him. Explain that. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. And what brothers will do is they'll flip precept upon precept to show. That a dove coming out of the sky. Bring it out. Bring it out. They'll do it. Bring it out. They'll do it. This is a vision. And this is a dream. And if you read your Bible like we're supposed to, you'll understand. You read the same thing over the same account. The same, the same, the same thing. The same stories that are for our learning that each and every one of us must go through to see Christ. Give me Genesis 28.10. Seeing the Spirit of God ascending and descending. This is a vision. That's right. This is a parable. And if you know the scriptures, your father had the same exact experience. Read this, Ark. Genesis 28 and 10. Read. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lit it and he lighted upon a certain place. And tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillow and lay down in the place to sleep. Now, I want you to read this again, right? And you have to stop being so damn carnal minded in the truth, man. We must think about this. This is verse 11. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones that was of that place. And put them for his pillows and laid down in that place to sleep. Anybody would exchange a stone or rock for a pillow. Bring it out. Bring it out. A stone for a pillow? Understanding, man, these are allegories. Read. And he dreamed. And he did what? And he dreamed. And he did what? And he dreamed. Seen a dream or a vision? Read. And behold. A ladder set up on the earth. What do you do with a ladder? You do what with a ladder? You climb this ladder. You climb ladders. Yeah. This is an illustration of how you must climb the ladder to see God. Read. And the top of it reached to heaven. At the top of this ladder, it was the kingdom of heaven. Read. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth 
Be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken. Matthew 3 and 6. Bring it out. This is you. I'm trying to get you to understand that this is you. Right? And when you when that voice is crying out in the wilderness, right? It's telling you to make that straight way for God. This is all that it's saying. This is all that it means. This is what you have to do. Read Matthew 3 and 6. Read that. Matthew 3 and 6. Read. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. That's all you got to do. It's confess. Making that straight way. When you hear that voice is telling you to make that straight path, that straight path is confessions of sins. Straight path. Once you confess, you don't have nothing to turn your left to and blame to. You ain't got nothing to turn your right to and blame to. You ain't got nothing to blame no more. You can just walk straight now. Right it's now. the remissions of sins, the confessions of sins. Read. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Keep reading. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That's what it means. It's the, unto your repentance. Confessions of sins. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That voice is telling you to repent. That voice is telling you to confess your sins. Right. When you're in that wilderness in order to let go the water. Read. But he that cometh after me In order for you to meet the one that come after him Read Is mightier than I Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear He shall baptize you With the Holy Ghost And with fire Give me First Peter 1 and 1 Bring it out. That voice that's crying to you man In that wilderness Is telling you to let go Make that way straight Make that straight way path For the Lord so you can deal with the Lord in order to meet God. The latter, God, Christ, man, woman, child, correct? You got to deal with that first. And you must wipe yourself clean. Bring that voice is telling you to wipe yourself clean. Confess your sins. Once you understand it, it's very clear on how this is talking to you. Directly to you directly to you preparing your way preparing to make it straight see the one that come after that water is the one that's with that fire 1 Peter 1 and 7 read that 1 Peter 1 and 7 read that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shah Christ. Let's sit on that. Give me John 1 and 35 again. Let's go back. Again, when that voice is crying to you, man, crying in that wilderness is telling you to let go. Okay? Yeah. Just showing you. Giving it to the nation. Hopefully we'll understand it. Give me John 1 and 35. Read this. John 1 and 35. Read. One. Again, the next day, after John stood and the two of his disciples. Now John has two disciples. 
with two of his disciples. John, two of his disciples. And this is after he's already baptized in with water. John is already baptized with the water. He's already cleansed the mind of the people. Yeah. Which is inside of you. You've already been baptized by John. You've already been baptized of the water. Right. Now let's see what's the next evolution after you hear the voice crying in the wilderness, telling you to make the way straight. You meet John. You get baptized by John. You confess your sins. You repent of your sins. This is the next thing that happens. Read. And looking upon Yahweh's side as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Yahweh's side. That's the only way to follow Christ. You see that? That's how you follow the Lord. Some of us at that water wheel. Look it out. Thirsty. Dying of thirst. Why you think Christ said if a man drink of this water, he'll never thirst again? Bring it out. What do you think that's about? Right? Read verse 37 again. Verse 37. Read. And the two disciples heard him speak. And the two disciples heard him speak. John speak. Talking about the Lamb of God. Read. And they follow Yahweh. Give me Mark 1 and 14. Some of us, we at that water and we don't want to drink. And understand this concept about this. Give me Mark 1 and 14. Read this. And when you're thinking about when you're thinking about I'm, 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 I'm just showing you the evolution that a man or a woman must take throughout their own life in order to show themselves worthy without spot to be presented to Christ so Christ can present you to the Father. Right? It's an evolution that we must go through. Read this. Mark 1 and 14. Read. Now after that John was put in prison, Yahweh came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The time is already fulfilled. Read. And the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is right now. Read. Repent ye and believe the gospel. He reading. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea. For there, for they were fishing. Simon and Andrew casting their nets into the sea. For they were fishers. Read. And Yahweh said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. He reading. And straightway. And what, hold up. In what way? And straightway. Hold up. In, in what way? And, and straightway. See the Lord say in straightway. Immediately. They've already known the baptism of John. After they been baptized with John, they went out to start to be fishers. After they've been cleansed. Out. Now they're meeting Christ. Bring it out. Now they're meeting the Lord. And straightway they forsook their net. Read. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. After they've been baptized with the water. After they heard that voice in the wilderness telling them to make that straightway for path. Was baptized by the water. Was baptized in the John. You meet John in your life. You meet John in your life. You get baptized with the water. Now Christ can come unto you now. Now the Lord can come and deal with you now. Now the Lord can come and sup with you now. And when the Lord tell you to come follow him. You straightway. Because that path you done already made it. You done already cleansed your mind. You done already wiped your mind clean with the word. You done already been submerged with the baptism. So when the Lord come into you, in order to walk with the Lord in straight way, they forsook their nets. They already made the way straight because they heard their voice in their head. Read. And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. You saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Read. Who also were in the ship mending their nets. Where are they at? In the ship. Mending their nets. See, these brothers was in the ship mending their nets. Still in that ship. Look it out. Mending their nets. After they had already been baptized by John, they got their mind clean. 
But they was in the ship. Still in, still with Pharaoh. Read. And straightway he called them. Read again. And straightway he called them. It's that same way. And straightway the Lord going to call you. But you got to make that way straight first. Before you can even walk on that straight path, you got to be baptized with water. Read. And they left their father, Zebedee, in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 68. Bring it out. Bring it out. See? See again. Mark 1 and 19. And when they had gone a little further thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in that ship with the hired servants and went after him. Read Deuteronomy 28, 68. Read this. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And then you go back and say, it says, and straightway he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the ship. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Verse 20 and say, and straightway he called them and left their and left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants. Read that last part again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Read for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants, with the bond men, and followed after Christ. Bring it out, bring it out. I'm gonna just leave that there. Give me John one and thirty eight. Bring it out. This is after that voice. Answer that voice. Listen to that voice. Answer that call. Because if you want to meet Christ, this is the first phone you got to pick up. This is the first one. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is the first phone you got to pick up. Read verse 38. John 1 and 38. Read. Then Yahweh I turned and saw them follow and said unto them, what seek thee? Then you want to stand, you start following Christ. And Christ to deal with you. Remember, Christ is in you. The kingdom of God is in you. This is going on throughout every one of us. Should be. Read. They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being inter interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? They asking Christ where you live at. Where you dwell? Where can I find you? Read. He saith unto them, Come and see. Say, follow me. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Is this in the hood? Is this in the ghetto? Bring it out. Bring it out. You want to see where I am on the right hand side of the Father? Come and see. Read. They came and saw where he dwelt. Came and seen where he dwelt, read. And abode with him that day. For it was about the tenth hour. And you go to Second Ezra, the fourteenth chapter to get that tenth hour, but for time's sake, we'll keep going. Go ahead, verse 40. Verse 40. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him we have found the Messiah read again we have found the Messiah read again we, we have, have found, found the, the Messiah, Messiah. Any, we, have we found it yet it have it we out. found the Messiah bring it out. you cannot find the Messiah unless you deal with that voice that's crying to you in the wilderness deal with it Deal with it. Trying to make you have a breakthrough. Trying to cleanse you. But this is after you deal with John. In your own life. 
Then you will say we have found the Messiah. Read. Which is being interpreted the Christ. We have found the Christ. Keep reading. And he brought him to Yahweh Shai. And when Yahweh Shai beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. A cornerstone. Keep reading. The day following. Yahweh Shai would go forth into Galilee. Now, when you read the day following, you read verse 29 and say the next day, and then verse 43 and say the day following, you can go to sleep and thinking this is Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. You can go to sleep and really believe that. Break it out. Understand the day is a thousand years in the Bible. Read verse 43. The day following. Yahweh Shai would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. He told Philip the same thing. Follow me. Follow the Lord. Read. Now Philip was in Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathaniel, Nathaniel and saith unto him, We have found him. We have found him. We have found him. Read. Of whom Moses in the law. Of whom Moses in the law read. And the prophets. And of the prophets read. Did write. Yahweh Shai of Nazareth. Christ of Nazareth read. The son of Joseph. The son of who? The son of Joseph. Now we thinking man that this is Joseph man. That you know Christ has sex with Mary. And the virgin birth is not real. And stuff like that. But that's what the scriptures say. And I understand where we've been going with it. With basically saying that. Christ got a real daddy, and then he had sex with Mary, and then the story is about, you know, him hiding the baby because of the customs of uh, Jerusalem and Rome at that time is, you know, before you have a marriage ceremony that, you know, you got to present the woman clean and fair, right? I understand that. But the scriptures say the son of Joseph. This is the son of Joseph. The son of Joseph. Give me Genesis 30 and 22. This is the son of Joseph. And, you know, again, the carnal rhetoric to, to, to denounce the scriptures. To denounce it. Right? This is the son of Joseph. Every promised child in the Bible come from a barren womb or come from a virgin womb, right? A womb that ain't been touched. A womb that God got to personally touch. This is the son of Joseph. Joseph came from that same barren womb. Read this. Genesis 30 and 22. Read. And God remembered Rachel and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived. And she conceived by being she was barren. Read. And bear a son. And bear a son. Read. And say, God has taken away my reproach. God has taken away me, me being barren. Read. And she called his name. Joseph. What was his name? Joseph. What was his name? Joseph. Joseph. See, Christ is the son of Joseph. Bring it out. See, but I'm going to leave that there. Another day. Read. And say, the Lord shall add to me. Another song. Give me Genesis 21 and 3. What about Isaac? Was he a promised child? Yeah. Wasn't his mother barren? Bring it out. Again, you read the same concepts over and over and over and over again. And us, we're trying to paint a picture to it. And we're trying to recreate this. Bring it out. Bring it out. Read this up. Genesis 21 and 3. Read. And Abraham called the name of his son. Read verse 1. Verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah, and he had saved, as he had saved, and the Lord did unto Sarah. As he had spoken. As he had promised. The promised child. The promised child is all throughout the scriptures. It's not just Christ. Read. And Sarah conceived. As the Lord promised her. The promised child after being barren. Read. And bear Abraham a son in his old age. 
at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him. Isaac. Give me John 1 and 43. Listen to that voice. And that voice is telling us to make that way straight for the Lord. Let go. Wash it away. Cleanse that mind. Let it all go. So you will be show yourself worthy without spot, without blemish. So the Lord can come unto you to tell you to follow him. Understand that. A lot of us, we have never heard this before. Read this. John 1 and 43. Read. The day following. Read 45. Verse 45. Yep. Philip findeth Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Yahweh Shai saw Nathaniel coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathaniel said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than thee. He read him. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Mark 1 and 9. Right? Again, listen to that voice. Listen to it. You know, that voice can keep you in bondage. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got that voice telling you to break through, telling you to let go, telling you to go ahead and rewash your mind so you can meet Christ. And some of us won't do it. You know, that's between each and every one of us to understand and to know why that we won't do that. And some of us, we got a lot of excuses. But if you're serious about this and you want to meet Christ for real, for real, you got to clean up that mind. Meet me, read Mark 1 and 9. Read this. Mark 1 and 9. Read. And it came to pass in those days that Yahweh came to Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John and Jordan. Even Christ had to be baptized too. Same thing, same process. He came in the, in, in the form of a man, in the likeness of man, and saw himself not to be equal with God. It's the same thing. You must be baptized with the water of the truth to cleanse your mind first. Read. And straightway, coming up out of the water. Read again. And straightway. Coming up out of the water. You see what coming out of the water is? First, you got to come out of that ground. And straightway, he cometh out of the water. Read. He saw the heavens open. Looking above, seeing the heavens open. Read. And the spirit, like a dove descending upon him. Keep reading. And there came a voice from heaven, saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And so straightway, you coming out of that water. And he saw the and he saw heavens open up, and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. Read verse twelve. And he immediately. And how long? And he immediately. And how long? And, and he immediately. After you get after you get submerged in that water, you wipe your mind clean. Now you're ready to meet God. Read. The spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Now you got to go back in the wilderness, deal with it all over again. Thought it was over with. Thought repentance was that easy? Bring it out. Now you got to reset. Now you got to check and make sure that you actually do it for real. Was this real? Came into the truth 
I done washed myself off with water. Yeah, I got my suit on. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Yeah, I done finally made it. Put your ass back in the wilderness. Bring it out. Let's go back. Bring it out. Let's go back. Let's see if there was a half wash. Let's see if you accepted the baptism of John for real in your life. Let's see if you washed yourself for real in your life. Or if you're playing games. Verse 12, read again. And immediately. The Spirit driving him into the wilderness. Going back to the wilderness after you've been baptized, read. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. And you got to understand, man, you got to fight the good fight of faith. That's right. Matthew 6 and 22, and we out. Don't play with that voice, man. That's right. Don't play with that. Because that's that voice that you need if you want to meet God. That's right. Bring it out. The water man being baptized with the water. Some of us in the truth, we still haven't even been baptized with water yet. Bring it out. Make sense? Read this out. Matthew 6 and 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Read. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And listen to the, think about the, this is the end of the lesson, but think about it again. This goes on between every single one of us. That tipping stone, that corner point to where you rising from the dead. You can feel it in your spirit. It's like a breakthrough. That's right. You feel it. Some of us experience it in different ways. But after we make that breakthrough, you got to get cleansed up because you're full of dirt. That's right. Don't reject that. And to be cleansed of that full of dirt, that's that voice crying for you in the wilderness telling you to make that straight way for God. All, all praise to the most high son. Shalom.